In this session, we are going to discuss one of the most important topics from a banker's point of view and that is interest, which can be classified into two types, simple interest and compound interest. Now, before we understand the classification, that is the difference between simple and compound interest, let us first understand what is meant by interest. Interest is nothing but the amount earned or paid by either lending money or borrowing money respectively. For example, when we lend money or when we give some loan to someone, we expect some returns on that. So that amount which is earned by giving money to others is known as interest. Similarly, when we borrow money from someone, we need to pay some extra amount over the main amount that is the principal amount. So this extra amount that is paid to the lender is known as interest. There are three very important terms related to calculation of interest. They are principal, time and rate of interest. So let us first understand what is meant by each one of them and then we shall proceed to understand the difference between simple interest and compound interest. Now the first term here is known as principal which is denoted by capital P. Now principal is nothing but the amount that has been borrowed or lent. This is the main amount or the actual amount which has been borrowed or has been lent and it is known as principal amount or simply we can call it as principal and it is denoted by P. The second term here is time period. There is always a pre-decided time period which is denoted as capital T. So this is the time for which the amount has been borrowed or has been lent. And the last term here is rate of interest. Rate of interest is nothing but the rate at which the amount has been borrowed. This is generally in terms of percentage per annum and it is denoted as capital R. So principal P is nothing but the amount which has been borrowed or lent. T is the time period for which the amount has been borrowed or lent. And rate of interest is the rate at which the amount has been borrowed or lent. And as I've already mentioned, this is calculated in terms of percentage per annum. So rate of interest should always be percentage per annum. And the time period also in general should be always in terms of years. So time T should always be taken in terms of years. Now rate of interest R, which is in terms of percentage per annum, is nothing but the amount which is paid over the principal amount per 100 per year. Let's say the rate of interest is 8% per annum. That means for every 100 rupees that has been borrowed, the person has to pay 8 rupees per annum or 8 rupees per year. So for example, if the person has borrowed 1000 rupees, he will be paying 80 rupees per year on that as the interest. So rate of interest is nothing but that percentage value which defines how much has to be paid per 100 rupees for one year. So based on these three values, that is principal, time period and rate of interest, the simple interest and the compound interest can be calculated. After learning about the various terms related to interest, that is principal, time and rate of interest, let us now understand the difference between simple interest and compound interest. Simple interest is a case in which the interest is paid at the end of every period. For example, let's say that interest is being calculated on a yearly basis. So in some cases, interest is paid at the end of every year as and when it falls due. So such a case is considered as a simple interest case. Whereas compound interest is a case in which the interest is not paid at the end of every period, but in fact it gets added to the principal amount. So that is the major difference between simple interest and compound interest. In case of simple interest, the interest is paid at the end of every period on a regular basis. Whereas in case of compound interest, the interest is not paid at regular intervals. In fact, it gets added to the principal amount. And finally, at the end, the interest along with the principal amount is paid back. So this is how we can differentiate simple interest and compound interest. But anyway, let us understand the difference with the help of a simple calculation. Let us assume that an amount of rupees 1000 has been borrowed. So the principal here is 1000 rupees for a period of two years. So there is a time period, two years and the rate of interest is 10% per annum. That means every year 10% of the principal amount has to be paid. Or we can understand that for every 100 rupees that has been borrowed, the person has to pay 10 rupees per year. So these are the three values. That is 1000 rupees which has been borrowed for a period of two years at 10% per annum. Let us understand the difference between SI and CI with the help of these calculations. Now, instead of using the formula directly, let us first do the calculation without using the formula. 
for example here we calculate simple interest for first year and for second year similarly compound interest for first year and for second year and try to understand the difference between these two so let us understand that simple interest for first year is si1 simple interest of first year which is equal to as we can see here we have to pay 10% per annum so for first year we have to pay 10% of 1000 rupees that is the principal so 10% of 1000 that is equal to 100 rupees so the simple interest for first year is 100 rupees let us now calculate the simple interest for second year now even for second year the simple interest will be 10% of the principal amount that is equal to 100 rupees now if you find out the total interest here total simple interest will be equal to simple interest of first year plus that of second year which comes out to be 100 plus 100 200 rupees so we can understand that the borrower has to pay 200 rupees for borrowing 1000 rupees for a period of 2 years at 10% per annum. Why? Because interest for first year is 100 and for second year also is 100 rupees. And this simple interest can be calculated with the help of a simple formula which is SI equals to PTR by 100. So always the simple interest can be taken as P into T into R by 100 where P is the principal amount, T is the time period, R is the rate of interest divided by 100. So 1000 into 2, 2000, 2000 into 10, 20,000 divided by 100 will be equal to 200 rupees. So friends, examination point of view, we are not going to do the calculation. We can simply use the formula and get the answer. But what happens behind the formula is as shown here. That is for the first year we get 100 rupees and again for the second year we get another 100 rupees. So total interest is going to be 200 rupees. So simply substitute the values in the formula PTR by 100 to get the answer. But remember, whenever we use the formula, time should always be in terms of years. The time period should always be taken in terms of years. And the rate of interest should always be in percentage per annum. So simple interest can be taken as PTR by 100. Apart from the interest, there is one more term which is known as amount. Amount is nothing but the total money which the borrower pays to the lender. For example, as in this case, 1000 rupees have been borrowed and the interest accrued is 200 rupees. So the total amount which the borrower has to pay to the lender will be equal to 1000 plus 200 that is 1200 rupees. So the total amount can be taken as principal plus simple interest. And if we take P common we get P into 1 plus PR by 100. So as you can see in this case interest or simple interest is PTR by 100 and the total amount is P plus SI. Remember total amount is denoted by A and that total amount here is going to be 200 plus 1000 that is equal to 1200 rupees. So the amount is 1200 whereas the simple interest is equal to 200. So this is how we can find out the simple interest. The formula is PTR by 100 and the total amount can be taken as P plus SI. Let us now do the calculation for compound interest. And for comparison point of view, we will take the same values that is 1000 rupees for a period of 2 years at 10% per annum to find out the compound interest. Now, let us again calculate compound interest for 2 years separately. So, the compound interest for first year will be equal to 10% of 1000 rupees as the rate of interest is 10% per annum and the principal amount is 1000. So, 10% 10 of 1000 will be equal to 100 rupees. The compound interest for second year will be equal to 10% of it won't be 1000 rupees for the second year it will be 10% of 1000 rupees plus 100 rupees as I have already mentioned in case of compound interest the interest is not paid on a regular basis in fact it gets added to the principal amount so here the principal for the second year will be principal of first year 1000 plus the interest of first year 100 that is nothing but total 1100 rupees so this can be taken as 10% of 1100 rupees which is equal to 110 rupees and the total compound interest can be taken as compound interest for first year plus that for second year. So that is 100 plus 110, 210 rupees. So as you can see here the difference in case of SI and CI is in case of SI that is simple interest the principal remains constant for the first year it is 1000 for the second year also it remains 1000 rupees. But in case of compound interest, the principal changes. As you can see here, for the first year, the principal was 1000. But for the second year, the principal will be 1100 rupees. Why 1100 rupees? The principal for second year is principal of first year, that is 1000, 
plus interest of first year that is 100. So the total principal will be 1100 and the interest comes out to be 10% of 1100 which is 110 rupees. Let us now look at the formula to be used to find out the compound interest. Compound interest CI can be calculated as P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of T minus P. Or if you take P common, it can be taken as 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of T minus 1. So this is how we can calculate the compound interest. So if you substitute the values of P, T and R, that is 1000 rupees, 2 years and 10% per annum in these formulae, we get the answer as 210 rupees. So examination point of view, we will use the formula, but this is what happens behind the formula. The individual calculation is first year 100 rupees and second year 110 rupees. Again in case of compound interest as well, there is something called as total amount which is denoted by A. The total amount is nothing but principal plus interest. So as you can see here, the principal is 1000 and the interest is 210 rupees. So the total amount will be 1000 plus 210, that is 1210 rupees. So the amount here A can be calculated as P plus CI which is nothing but P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of T. As you can see from the formula of CI, it is P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of T minus P. So when we have to find out the total amount A, we need to add principal to the interest. So when we add principal minus P and the principal gets cancelled. So the left out value is P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of T. So that can directly be taken as the amount for compound interest. So the total amount in case of CI will be P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of T. So here the interest is going to be 210 as discussed and the total amount will be 1000 rupees plus 210 that is equal to 1210 rupees. So when we use the values in the second formula here, our answer will be 1210 rupees. So this is the difference between simple interest and compound interest calculation. Let us once again revise what are the major points to be understood here. The first point is in case of simple interest the principal remains constant. Even for the third year simple interest will be 10% of 1000 that is equal to 100 rupees. And even for fourth year again it continues to be 1000 rupees only. So the principal remains constant in case of simple interest. Why because in case of simple interest the interest is paid as and when it is generated. So at the end of every year, the interest of 100 rupees is paid back. But in case of compound interest, as we have already discussed, interest is not paid on a regular basis. Whereas here it actually gets added to the principal amount. So that is the reason in case of CI, the principal changes. For first year it is 1000, for second year it is 1100 and so on. So the principal for second year is nothing but principal of first year plus interest of first year. Similarly, if you want to find out the principal of third year, the principal of third year in case of CI will be principal of second year plus interest of second year. So principal of second year is 1100 and interest of second year is 110. So we can say that the principal for third year is principal of second year plus interest that is earned in second year which is 1100 plus 110 that is equal to 1210 rupees. And again the compound interest for third year will be 10% of this value. So 10% of 1210 will be equal to 121. So this is how the principal keeps changing, first year 1000, second year 1100, third year 1210 and so on. And hence the interest also increases, for first year it is 100, second year 110, third year 121 and so on. So what we need to understand here is, in case of CI, the principal changes on a regular basis. The principal for present year is nothing but principal of previous year plus interest earned in the previous year. For example, the principal for ninth year will be nothing but the principal amount of 8th year plus the interest that has been earned in 8th year. So one major difference that we can understand in case of SI and CI is in case of simple interest, the interest is earned only on the principal amount. As you can see here, it is only on the principal amount but not on anything else. Whereas in case of compound interest, the interest is earned not only on the principal but also on the interest of previous years. As you can see here, principal we get interest. At the same time, we get interest on the previous year's interest, that is 100 rupees. Here again, we get interest not only on principal, but on the previous year's interest. So compound interest always is an interest on principal and earlier interest, whereas simple interest is an interest only on the principal amount. One more point that we can observe in case of SI and CI is, the simple interest for first year is 100 rupees and the compound interest for first year is also 100 rupees. 
that means there is no difference between SI and CI for a period of one year 100 rupees and again 100 rupees here why because for the first year principal remains same in both the cases the principal will change only from second year onwards that is the reason we can observe a difference in case of interest of second year we have 100 rupees for SI of second year and 110 rupees for CI of second year so the difference will come into picture only from second year onwards why because the principal changes only from second year onwards if it is a yearly calculation and before we take up any other example let us also understand why simple interest is called simple and why compound interest is called compound the reason why simple interest is called simple is because here we simply get the interest only on the principal amount there is no confusion and no complicated calculation but compound interest is called compound because it is a compounding procedure here as you can see every year the interest is calculated and that is compounded to the principal again in the next year the interest is calculated and that gets compounded to the principal so it is like a compounding procedure where the interest gets mixed with the principal always so that is the reason these two things are named so